Hey everyone, I'm Jenna. Hi, I'm Casey. And we're from Celebrity Hotspot, and today we're here in New York City with... Reed Alexander. So what brings you out here today? Uh, I have been so, so busy. I'm in the Big Apple right now, working on uh, my book tour, which has been going on these past few months. Uh, have some really fun stuff lined up, and enjoying what is potentially a nice sunny day. It's still to be decided. We've had a lot of kind of gray, windy days, and I think we have some clouds in the sky, but really enjoying the fast pace of being here right now. That's great. So can you tell us about your book? Oh, 100%. So it's Cool Bites, uh, 100 Nutritious, Delicious, Family-Friendly Dishes. And we've chatted before all about the site, coolbites.com. You guys have been super supportive, so thanks for that. And that's been the inspiration behind the book. And I really wanted to create something that, you know, is tangible, that families can bring into their kitchen, use as a shopping list at the grocery store, a real guide. In fact, what's really cool is um, good friend President Bill Clinton actually wrote the uh, quote on the cover, calling it a valuable guide for a new generation, which really captures what I wanted to create. So inside you'll find uh, everything from breakfast to lunch to dinner, snacks, sides, of course desserts. I don't know about you, I have a big sweet tooth, right? You guys are with me on that one? Um, so uh, yeah, you know, all better for you lightened up takes on those dishes. It's been really fun to share them. In fact, many of them are inspired by my travels, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I think, you know, traveling and food is kind of like an edible souvenir that you bring home with you. So I really wanted to impart that to the readers as well. What's your favorite recipe that you have? Ah, uh, that's a tough choice. I mean, I guess, you know, I'm kind of split down the middle. Like, a bunch come to mind, but I guess it's not so hard, is it? Because I do have my favorites. I would say my veggie dumplings, for sure. I love, like, dim sum, and I love sushi, Japanese, Chinese. So these veggie dumplings are steamed. They're not fried. There's no oil. Aren't they awesome? And they're a great party food, too, because you make, like, a ton in these little wonton wrappers with this awesome veggie filling that has garlic and sesame seeds, soy sauce, all fresh vegetables, edamame, you know, the soybeans, yeah, yeah. a ton of different kinds of flavors, really great texture texture, uh, fill them up and then steam them in a steamer basket or just kind of over some boiling water in, in a big pot at home. And they go instantly like lightning. Let me do, people are like, they turn into like vultures, like forget the chopsticks. They just transform when they see these and dive in. It's one of their favorite things uh, whenever I, you know, serve it to guests at home. And I serve them with like a lemongrass dipping sauce. So kind of citrusy, delicious. That's a favorite. Uh, I would say on the dessert side, definitely. I mean, <laughs> they're all favorites. Um, I love the peanut butter chocolate chip cookie bars. It's like digging into a fudge brownie, but with peanut butter running all between it. Don't you love that? But essentially it's like dark chocolate mixed into a cookie cake batter. It's beyond delicious. It's rich, it's chewy, uh, kind of creamy. It just hits the spot. And then another great thing too, that you've got to serve like fresh and warm from the oven. If, have you ever had souffle? Oh, yeah. It's my favorite dessert. So I have like a molten lava chocolate souffle cake That's that when you, good. it's so good. It's like off the charts. When you dig in with the spoon, you get like this kind of iron ore, this magma of chocolate oozing out in every direction. It's beyond delicious. But again, way lightened up, you know, cutting down on butter, using egg whites instead, even using some whole grains to make it more nutritious. Always thinking in these recipes, how can you keep them delicious and flavorful for the whole family, but you know, make them a little healthier too. So how did you use your website to like make your book? Did you like use some elements from the site to make your book? Like totally. I mean, the whole theme is there. I think the book is really kind of a print uh, manifestation of the spirit of CoolBites.com, which if you remember CoolBites first generation, which we've just finished, you know, upgrading and relaunching the site, our first take was to create a digital kitchen that was interactive on the homepage where you could like play with the blender and open the fridge and, and move around things in the toaster. It was really fun. You got, got like a hands-on feeling in cyberspace space of what it would be like to be in the most cutting edge kitchen that even I would love to have at home, you know? I would surf online to check out what a really great kitchen looks like. Uh, but in addition, now we finished upgrading the site, as I said, and we have Cool Bites 2.0, which almost feels like a really cool, healthy, living-centric magazine, you know? It's uh, really interactive, and there are fun elements, and there's like a whole featured blog section, and there's breaking news, and there's a news ticker with all the best tweets coming in online about healthy eating and recipes. It's really, really an exciting forum to interact interact with uh, readers. I would say the way I transformed that and brought it into a cookbook setting was, of course, to create all new recipes that are exclusive to the book. You won't find them anywhere else, so a hundred just in those pages, but certainly using the Cool Bites theme, using the signature colors, yeah. tips, you know, uh, kind of popping up here and there that come to life and speak through the page, and also maintaining this idea that it's about tying together entertainment and lifestyle. It's more than just food. It's more than just, you know, acting, etc. All of that comes together and lives side by side on the site where we interact with readers and now this cookbook has been a great tool to drive the conversation. Do you feel like the interactive part has gotten more kids to use the website more than just adults? 
You know, that's a great question. I think it's really a blend. You know, from my perspective, writing the blogs, interacting with the readers, getting the emails, getting the tweets all the time. I'm constantly hearing on social media, on Facebook, you know, through digital platforms as well. Or when people actually take time to send in pictures of the recipes yeah. on Instagram or mail physical, you know, things that uh, they're sending me that kind of bring to life anecdotes from inside their kitchen and behind their stovetop. The people I'm hearing from really run the gamut. It's a ton of kids, you know, maybe it's an older brother with a younger sibling who are just breaking into the kitchen for the first time. They made something easy like the, you know, whole wheat pancakes or the Belgian waffles and just kind of were over the moon. Maybe it's a mom or a dad saying, you know, we really struggle with healthy eating in our family, but now we have this great resource that makes it fun, makes it approachable and doable for us. Sometimes I hear from doctors or trainers who are saying, we're really using Cool Bites as a resource to teach our patients, our students. It's really fantastic, you know. The same thing with teachers who are using it in the classroom to discover kind of the art and science behind nutrition and a fun spin on it that, you know, makes a serious message a lot more palatable, no pun intended, you know what I'm saying? So it's really a mix, uh, but certainly those core audiences have been there since the beginning mm -hmm. and they've really stayed loyal to Cool Bites. That's great. So how did, like, did you use your platform, like, from my Carly and Sam and Katz, like, build up your website? Like Another awesome question. I think, you know, naturally kind of inherent to that in what I do as an actor is an amazing audience at home. In fact, all around the world. And I think one thing that's so exciting about Nickelodeon and our shows, whether it be Sam and Cat or iCarly, is their global recognition and, and kind of the power worldwide, which is exciting because, you know, sometimes walking down the streets in London or Paris, I get to meet fans from Shanghai or Singapore or Brunei. It's incredible, you know, and that's a really big gift. And I think that naturally creates a little bit of curiosity about, you know, what maybe we're doing off camera the cast so you know people kind of stumble across the site they want to check it out what's this you know what's Neville Reed Alexander working on now uh, so instantly people are, are kind of driven to our doorstep from that and I'm really grateful to have that platform because it's marrying two huge passenger passions of mine which are acting and entertainment you know making yeah. people laugh which I love that's kind of you know uh, the starting point for me really the first major focus that I've had uh, throughout my career and then uh, secondly then bringing them uh, to the doorstep of lifestyle and and creating an interest as well that maybe they might other not otherwise have. Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, so many fans have organically come to Cool Bites, so many readers, as I say, you know, many families who will type in things in their search browser, like healthy eating for families, you know, what to cook for back to school lunch, great summer barbecue ideas. And they come across these recipes and realize that they're not just for kids, they're not just for adults, it's really a mix of everyone. And that also creates uh, some loyal devotees as well. And I'd say we've really seen that with the book, you know, from launching it and being on tour, you know, going to all, I think went probably been to 30 cities now with a bunch more coming up and I've had the chance to meet literally thousands and thousands of people and so many of them you know love the shows and then so many are just like you know we love to cook and we think what you're doing is really cool so that means the world to me really really grateful for that kind of feedback. So what's it like being on the book tour like where are you going in the future? It has been so crazy it's been such a whirlwind we kicked it off in fact here in New York so I'm excited now to be continuing it this is going to be our hub and certainly it is the epicenter of a lot of uh, food activity across the country. Uh, let's see, we've been out to Los Angeles, we've been to San Francisco, Chicago, uh, we've been to Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Palm Beach, Miami, yeah. you name it, like dozens and dozens of cities, and that's just scratching the surface. Now coming up, I'll be back in the Northeast and the Midwest, and excited to announce some tour dates, heading out to the West Coast again as well. And now the next stop on the tour is London. I cannot wait, just a couple weeks away, looking forward to meeting tons of British fans and uh, getting to thank them for watching the show and checking out the book, which has been super popular everywhere from the United Kingdom to Australia and, of course, right here at home. So those are some upcoming stops yeah. along the way. So speaking of fans, we have some fan questions. Oh, so. bring it on. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> right? Okay. And you found these on Twitter, On Twitter, right? yes. Everybody Twitter. got involved. Mm -hmm. I love it. Good. Okay, we wanted so. wanted to rally the troops and mm -hmm. hear what people wanted to know. All right. So this one's from Kathia Hicks. Okay. What is your favorite activity? Ah, I love playing tennis. I'm a big sports guy. Um, I hang out on the treadmill for fun, you know. I love doing cardio. Uh, let's see, some other fun activities. Always great movies. Going to the movies is such an awesome escape, especially now that, you know, everything's been so busy. It's an awesome way to tune out for a couple hours and just kind of go into another world. Reading good books, of course, cooking. Uh, you know, so much fun stuff. Travel, definitely. Always looking for fun places to explore. What's your favorite place you've traveled to? 
Uh, well, I just came back from Switzerland, actually, which was really quite beautiful. The Swiss Alps and St. Moritz and Geneva, which was really cool. I would say my favorite place. Oh, that's tough. Um, maybe London. I'd love to live there. Certainly Paris. That's like a slice of heaven on earth, you know, uh, with a French accent. <laughs> so, I mean, all of those places. Spain is a pretty cool country. Looking forward to visiting Asia soon for the first time. I think that'll be neat. Like Hong Kong, you know, places like that. So excited. So this question is from I Support MTC. Have you had a crazy fan encounter? <laughs> of course, I've had many. Um, I guess the craziest one, I think people dressed up once with Neville hair. Like, which isn't a hard style to achieve, like, if you have short hair like mine. But if you don't or, like, you naturally have longer hair or a certain kind, it's just difficult to get exactly that look. But, like, they sprayed it into place. It was a little bit, like, I didn't know whether to think it was creepy or it was cool, you know, or somewhere in the middle. Um, but I, I guess it's just a, a sign of hardcore viewers. Um, so Neville hair, you know, people have brought cool stuff to the signings, like, um dill pickles, you know, or tapenade, all those classic, you know, Neville-esque foods. So that's all, and that's kind of delicious too. It's a nice, you know, take home. <laughs> Anyone who wants to bring food to the signings is welcome. So this one's from Exactly Grande. Do you miss filming iCarly? Of course. I mean, those are amazing memories. Almost seven years on set, mm -hmm. seeing the same group of five awesome co-stars all the time, who I really admire, who I think are great actors. Um, but, you know, I think it's been the right time for us to move in different directions. Sam and Kat has been great. Mm -hmm. I'm developing a bunch of things. I know Miranda, Jeanette, everybody is working on fun projects. It's been wonderful to see the success for Jeanette and Ariana of that show. And, of course, to stay in touch with everyone. So I definitely miss it. But I'm excited to take on new opportunities as well. But, you know, the friends I think I made there will last forever, whether it's Dan Schneider, who is, you know, brilliant, our creator, whether it's, of course, as I say, the co-stars and the actors or the crew that you don't get to see who are so hardworking. You know, that's been really special. That's great. So this question is from Justice MC. How did Dan Warp find you to play Neville? <laughs> That's a funny story. I feel like everything has roots back into New York. All roads lead back to the Big Apple. It's like the Emerald City, right? Uh, well, in fact, I was here working on a, a project on stage, and I had gotten the uh, the script, and I checked out the show. It had never been on air before, so really all I knew about it was it you know, starred Miranda Cosgrove, who came over from Drake and Josh, and was created by this legendary creator who I love from Zoe 101 and all that and all of these other shows that Dan has uh, been behind. And I checked out the script. I thought it sounded really, really fun read a couple lines on camera in a room just like this one and um, in fact I sent it in and a couple days later they said we'd love you to come out and be on the show so that was a really cool story and I flew out to LA uh, started filming some episodes long before the, uh, probably six months before you know the show really took to the airwaves and we all knew that this was something really special seeing the set was you know a dazzling experience there's a lot of great stuff in the works but we didn't know how pe you never know how you know the audience is going to react you can know that something's really fantastic but there are so many factors. Got to be the right timing for a show to come on the air. This is a cutting edge, you know, premise with a show that ties in digital elements. I mean, a web show, especially at the at that time, was very cutting edge, you know. Um, so to see the the way that the fans have embraced the show has been really spectacular. Mm -hmm. And this one's from Tiffany, mm. Virginia. Um, who who's your biggest inspiration when it comes to like anything? Wow. Ah, these are tough questions. This feels like 2020 right now. Um, my biggest inspiration when it comes to anything? I have a couple in different categories. I would say my biggest, biggest inspiration is probably President Clinton. You know, seeing how he has left office but continued to inspire so much change and do so much good in the world and be a major force for, I think, positive advancement has been beyond inspiring to me. If you look at his work here at home, I'm privileged to be a part, of course, of the Clinton Foundation and the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. So what he's doing in America is incredible, as he did, you know, for his eight years in office. But then when you look beyond our borders and you see his humanity activities in places like Rwanda or the Clinton Global Initiative which has been to Asia or his work in Haiti after the disastrous earthquakes yeah. there that really you know makes you say wow this is someone who's using their platform to change the world and I think his legacy will last for many many decades into the future and it's a big inspiration I would say other inspirations for me um, I mean many incredible journalists you know I get to talk to them all the time people like Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb from the Today Show I mean I'm a big fan of uh, Brian Williams I think he's awesome I think Oprah has done something truly incredible I have a lot of inspirations my favorite chef I mean that's like I have probably 10 but my favorite overseas chef who I'm 
thinking about right now because I've been booking some fun reservations in the UK for a dinner is a guy called Alain Ducasse. You've got to check him out. Okay. He's uh, from Paris, in fact, and he lives in Monaco, and his food is just insane. So big inspiration on the culinary side. What are your social media accounts? Like- yeah, well, check out on Twitter at Reed Alexander. Um, that's uh, my kind of Twitter hub. That's the main frame of all the social media work that I do. Instagram is the real Reed Alexander and Facebook is Reed Alexander as well. So hop on over and check out what's going on. I'd love to interact with everybody. Great. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you guys.